It's eight o'clock. It's Wednesday, and it's George Orr on Raw Raw tonight. I'm really excited. I've got uh, a friend who uh, is an owner, who is a client, who I I, I, I looked up their notes, and and we first started working together 17 years ago. 17 years ago, I can't believe it. Jenny Gould is a breeder and she is a trainer and she is a raw feeder and she is a no nonsense no nonsense kind of gal is what i've written in the description she's great because she calls a spade a spade um she's really helped me um, um uh, she's taught me uh lots of little bits and pieces she's helped me to to uh in the way i look at dogs and she's done some some trials of uh, bits and pieces that have come along and so together we've we've done quite a lot and i'm really really pleased that she emailed me a couple of months ago and said after i said does anybody want to come on george or if anybody's got any burning topics and she said yes i'd love to come on and so here she is let me introduce this is jenny cool she's got she's uh, at crazy canines I'm going to let her introduce herself because she will do it an awful lot more <laughs> elegantly than me. Uh, Jenny, good evening. How are you? Hi, Nick. Yeah, good. Thank you. You in with the you in my pajamas? <laughs> You're in your pajamas. You no, I'm out of my pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Brilliant. And you're in with the puppies. Yeah. Most of them are behind the camera over there, actually. But okay. they're just waking up and they're just heading my way. Yep. Um, coming up and wagging you can't quite see but um okay yeah they're three weeks old today so they're just starting to interact um hang on i'll just you can have a little look let's see if we can just angle yeah, it yeah, down. Yeah, let's have a look let's have some puppy you are. let's There's have some puppy there before we start there we go there is 10 of them but yeah. um uh, there's two that have made their way up to this end and the rest are sleeping but i suspect okay. they may move at some point uh, so we've they'll, got, they'll, we've got they'll, two at the moment yeah 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 Oh, fantastic. And are they well, Jenny? Are they yeah, well? Great. Yeah, really good. Have really good. Just to start thinking about weaning. Amazing. 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 I'm, 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 if I was a good inter interviewer, I would start with uh, uh, how long you've been doing it and stuff like that. But just tell me, have you ever, right, before you got into raw, did you ever breed pups on kibble? No. You never have. No. But no. I bet you've seen uh, many, a, many a litter of GSDs on kibble because uh, if we compare oranges with oranges how would you say this lot of pups and pups that you've seen just looking from the outside because obviously mm -hmm. you're biased like me yeah but definitely. if you were looking from the outside what differences do you see between the kibble pups at three weeks say and raw pups at three weeks what would you say this is interesting well, all of mine have been raw fed. So I've never had my own litter on kibble. Yeah. Okay. Um, so three week old puppies, I'm not, I don't know, because I've not seen three week old puppies, German Shepherd puppies on kibble. Right. I've seen an awful lot of kibble fed dogs that come to my puppy groups. Okay. Um, and what I would say about the raw fed is they're chunkier, they're more solid feeling. Um, and um, and quite often calmer actually, okay. uh, than a lot of the kibble, kibble fed dogs. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I, I often encourage people to go my way <laughs> you, <laughs> where I you. can. <laughs> but, I mean, if you've got chunkier, and and to my, my, my experience is that raw-fed pups are a lot less trouble. You know, you get less, 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 less problems, you get less skin problems, you get less gut problems, you get less, less everything problems. Yeah. And if they're chunky, well, that's probably how, how they're meant to be. Um so, so that's it because we've got we've got um, Mouse. She's eight weeks old. She's just come to live with us as well. So, you're saying that they are calmer. That the raw fed pup is calmer. And and Mouse's breeder has just changed from kibble. Mm. The last uh, uh, Bluebell, who's now eighteen months, her litter was the last litter, and and she was she was a kibble. Um, she was a kibble litter and then the owner and i didn't lean on her and i didn't threaten her with hell and damnation i promise <laughs> but she did she just she just thought oh you know i think looking at bluebell and you know and looking into it so she did she she, she made the leap and now she's gone to raw and she is cock a hoop 
at the whole thing. She can't believe her eyes. And mm. one of the main things she says is that the puppies, okay, the, the poos are much better, yeah. but yeah. The, the puppies sleep all night. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh okay. And did she not have that before? No, that not, not Why because did she put that direct comparison. Yeah, exactly. So she's saying in the old days, they would be up and mooching about through, through the night, but now. They sleep through that. So she's got a direct comparison. Same breeding, same mother, um, same household. So everything's the same. The only yeah. difference is the raw and the pups are 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 better poos and better sleep. Okay, if we're being really scientific about it, those are the observable facts. Mm -hmm. So there is a big, big difference. I mean, that's no surprise to you and me, but there might be people perhaps watching who are who maybe breed. What, yeah. What, so, what would your thought? Thought we hadn't even prepared this. We've got one or two <laughs> things we had prepared, but I've just this is really important. If if you had to say to somebody they were they were just about to start breeding, um, what would your what would your thoughts be to them about about nutrition? Nutrition, full stop. Yeah. Well, for me, I like to have raw fed mum rule fed father if possible it's not always possible when yeah. you've got your uh, yeah. you can stud dogs if you don't have your own um but for me I, there's no other way to go uh, i i wouldn't i wouldn't dream of breeding on anything that was um uh potentially full of processed uh ingredients yeah um and the dogs the dogs they really really ought to be eating dog food okay. um you know as in not tinned food not not packet food but food that they would have would have fed uh, originally yeah and yeah, uh, yeah. i mean i've had some of my girls have um regurgitated for for the puppies and you know it really is going back wow. to instance. the real and, deal um, yeah and i think wow. you know uh, very much the way that i rear my litters is as uh organically as i can possibly go so for me food's an absolute absolute okay. must. i wouldn't i wouldn't dream of going any other way okay. really with it that's and fantastic. I think that when they go off to their new homes, they don't get the upset tummies that I see with a lot of uh, pups that have been um, kibble fed. Um, so often, often the puppies that that come to my groups, if as soon as you want to introduce anything else to to use for rewards, yeah, dogs the dogs tummies can't cope with it. Whereas I think with the raw feeding, they're getting a, a nice variety of different things right yeah. from the start. So the dogs are able to cope with yeah. with more than than just what you know what goes in their bowl all the time. Uh, yeah. And it's so important. So important. Makes a massive difference to training. Huge difference to training. Tell us about that. Tell us about that. Uh, not being able to use a variety of uh, rewards will means you can pay your dog according to the work that they give you oh, or okay. to the responses that they give you. So if you have a puppy that can really only be kept on uh, some form of um, diet, sorry, he's clambering all over. <laughs> happen all over my mobile um switching things on um if you so if you have a a dog that is that you can pay according to their responses the dogs are brilliant they pick it up so you want to have a hierarchy of rewards right if you don't have a dog that's so sensitive because it's never been fed anything else its whole life and then you want to start training this puppy eight weeks and you want to start to introduce alternate uh rewards in your hierarchy so you've got the lower value and then all the way up to higher value mm. uh, and then the puppies tummies can't cope with it and the top the the tummies uh they got upset tummies and then yeah. they don't ever want to go away from kibble and then for the puppy to go out into the big wide world and have the environment that they are uh that you're competing against kibble just does not cut it <laughs> um it really doesn't cut it so you want to be able to use bits of meat and yeah. and all sorts of stuff and yeah. even if you've got a puppy that's only ever been fed on kibble and it cannot tolerate anything else because it's been reared all the way through on that yeah. it really really does put you in a very difficult position when it comes to trying to train your dog that is absolutely brilliant and, and for me i would say if you look after the microbiome the gut microbiome by giving raw food the microbiome is going to be more robust to mm. a bit of this and a bit of that as, yeah. it, as regards uh, things great so listen we've we've jumped jumped right into the deep end let's swim to the shallow end and <laughs> <laughs> and say uh tell us about you and tell us about how people can get in touch with you and what you do okay um i started in dogs all years ago when i was probably about 10. Okay. Uh, first German Shepherd was at 16. 
Okay. Um, and uh, I lost that one at five years old to cancer. So that was the the thing that actually piqued my interest in alternatives. Yeah. Actually, uh, so okay. that was a very very long time ago. Now I'm I'm nearly fifty. Where does the time go, Nick? Um, yeah, and you're not. I don't believe it, you. <laughs> and that's where it, it it piqued my interest really in trying some other stuff. She'd been on some medication to stop her seasons every time she came into season. Uh, so I started questioning things really at five years old with 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 a cancer. So. Um, yeah, and that's where I really started with it all. So uh, to fast forward a little bit from there, I've stayed with my shepherds ever since. So that's been 35 years and I've been training probably virtually for all of that. Yeah. And I compete in competition obedience. That's my first love in sports with my dogs. Um, I've got I've I've had three obedience champions. So uh, the German shepherds are not nowadays. The sport that we have nowadays is is mostly collies, mostly border collies, yeah. maybe. 80%, 90% border collies. Um, so it's a really big thing, you know, and the shepherds, you know, for me, raw diet has really, really helped me keep my dogs fit enough to keep working. You know, they're big dogs, big dogs, not not necessarily, um, you know, built to do competition obedience as it is nowadays. It's it's very exact uh, in terms of precision, like dressage yeah. would be. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so an awful lot of shepherds don't really make it to the top. Wow. Um, and... You know, I'm sure the raw feed and the, really just the whole rearing, the holistic approach with the dogs has helped keep them fit enough to keep working, really, up to a reasonable age. And you do training as well. Um, uh, yeah. Tell us, uh, what, just first of all, what's your Facebook? People can, can uh, look uh, at your Gould, Facebook. Jenny Gould, um, oh, God, sports sports dog training, I think. Hang, Hang on. on. Oh. Somebody put it in the comments for me. <laughs> Let's have a look. Let's have a look. They will, they will. Uh, Jenny Gould. Sports dog training, I think. Yeah, I think that is right. I put yeah. it in the thingy. Jenny, go. Yeah, you put it, you put it in the, in the beginning. Dog on Facebook. And I do some I do some pet training, so, you know, puppies and things like that, and I do competition stuff. So, you know, uh, yeah, competition of being it's my first love, but I also do working trials, and there's a new sport out called UK Dog Sport, which is great, fun. For anybody who doesn't want to get too heavily into working trials or obedience, uh -huh. uh, yeah, great. So, and it's great for the dogs. So good for the dogs um, to have the framework and do stuff. Oh, okay, just to to really get things moving. Yeah. Okay. Uh, fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. And why German Shepherds? Why uh, why did you get into German Shepherds initially? Ellie will love you for it. She she's a really I know. German Shepherd. I remember the boy that she had. Yeah. Taylor, wasn't it? Taylor, yeah, big Taylor, softest dog on the planet. Uh, mm. Beautiful guy. Uh, mm. Yeah, so we've lived with German Shepherds as well. But what's your take on German Shepherds? They're not an easy breed. Okay. They're not an easy breed. So um, I've initially. always loved them. I loved them right from, from when I was young. What, what I don't know, I was 16. What, what made me really like them at 16? Uh, I don't know. I wanted a dog that was into me. My first little dog loved my mum. And I wanted a dog that was into me. And, of course, Shepherds are known to be very owner-orientated. Um, this is pudding, by the way. <laughs> pudding. We He's can cool. hardly see. Um, you should have been it's in your best, wearing black. You should have been in your, be your best white Versace outfit. Your John yeah, Travolta outfit. Well. I don't think yeah. that happened, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had them on pudding. the floor. They're white on the floor. All right. But it's only because I'm having to have them up. I know. I know. You both. Just um, let's have a close up. Let's have a close up look. Oh, pudding. Hello. Let me let me do him there, yeah. and then you'll have the light background. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Hello, pudding. He says, "Yeah, whatever, whatever." Very chilled, very chilled, puppy. Oh, brilliant. Um, yeah. So yeah, so I love. I don't know why I love shepherds right from the beginning. They're not an easy breed. Yeah. They have um, strong prey drives. Usually, uh, they can they can be suspicious naturally, hyper vigilant, suspicious of their surroundings or, or of people approaching and other dogs yeah. approaching. They need to be well trained oh. uh, to be responsive to their owners from that perspective, to be able to keep a handle on on strong prey drive, wanting to chase anything that moves. Yeah. They need an outlet. They need a job. It doesn't mean you have to to compete with them in sports, but you have to give them some brain work, and they have to have regular training. But they're they're not an e they're not an easy breed. They're not for everybody. You've got to love the um, the stuff that comes with it. So, and I think you've got to be slight, slightly obsessive, really, to have a to have a German Shepherd. Yeah, they are. I mean, they are 
they're high-end working dogs aren't they really yeah you know um you need to think think carefully but for all that work you put in they they pay that 10 times over back mm -hmm. to you won't they that's that's it i yeah. mean most people would say that of their dogs but but yeah. shepherds would do that in their own very strong very no nonsense way which is brilliant yeah. you've got you've um, got to like a dog that's obsessive with you really because that's what they are yeah you've got to enjoy that yeah yeah totally so um yeah so they're three weeks your pups are about three weeks tell us on uh, what you're going to do raw wise over the next till they go when are they going uh, eight weeks ten eight weeks, weeks 12 weeks eight, eight, eight weeks, weeks. Okay, so tell us, tell us what you're going to do over the next eight weeks. Five because weeks. we have to do eight weeks now, Nick, not because it's necessarily the right age for the puppies. You have to do that. You have it's to. It's supposed to be eight weeks now. Official Why? line is supposed to be eight weeks. Who says who? While it's coming with Defra and, and all that lot, it says that it's got to be eight weeks. And I have to say, some of my litters are far better off going before eight weeks um, because they can start to get competitive. So, uh, you know, and, and the, the puppies are, are at a point where they really need to go off and explore their own their own plate, their own homes, get out into life and that sort of okay. thing, really. So, yeah, I think sometimes it's detrimental hanging on. Each, each litter's different. Some litters are better going closer to eight weeks. Yeah. Some are better going to seven. Uh, just depends on the litter. And that's the thing. That's the whole thing with all of them. Yeah. But weaning, going back to weaning. So where will I go with that? Yeah. Um, I'll probably start with something like um, goat's milk and cooked, maybe cooked chicken, cooked turkey. Mm -hmm. And I'll blend it just so they start to lap, lap I, it up. Yeah. Um, and I'll probably only do that for maybe four, first four or five days. Then yeah. I'll introduce a little bit more. I'll probably make it less mushy for yeah. them. Yes. Uh, but I won't introduce bones straight away. I made that mistake with my first litter uh -huh. and they were all constipated. <laughs> so, okay. you know, like everything you live, you learn everything. Every litter I have, I do something different with. Okay. And uh, yeah, so they'll go on to um, non, non, but it'll be like human grade mints really to begin okay. with. Okay. And then I'll start to introduce um, minces with a little bit of bone. And then by the time they get to six weeks, they'll be on um, wings and necks as well. Okay. So have their first sucks on bone, really. Okay. Um, so when do, when does the raw come in? So initially you'll cook the mints. I don't oh, think you need yeah. to, but if you do, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. But some yeah. people do. About some four people weeks. Do. About, about four, four weeks. weeks. So just a week of, of cooked. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Fair yeah. enough. And Fair I just enough. do it really, really lightly to begin with, just because I think, well... If the mum's happy feeding, I always let the mums make their own mind up as to how long they want to keep feeding for. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just basically, I just, um, I let I let the mums dictate. So if mum's happy feeding, I might go, well, let's just, you know, pop a little bit of stuff in for them. Yeah. Um, like easy stuff. But yeah, by about four weeks, they'll be eating raw. Okay, raw. good. And then six weeks, they'll be on uh, uh, turkey necks, things like that. That's great. Yeah. And then it's plain sailing from there. It's just yeah, yeah. throw raw food at dog and off you go. Yeah. Fabulous. Okay. Well done you. That's really, really good. So, um, uh, so, and, and the raw, what was, tell us your journey with raw. Cause I presume when you were 15, 16, raw wasn't, you know, nobody talked about raw in those days. No. So, uh, tell us your, your raw journey. What, 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 what did you start with and and what turned your mind uh you actually <laughs> oh. oh i didn't know fair, you were gonna say that i didn't know you were gonna fair, say that i looked into raw and i was like a lot of people like a lot of my puppy owners at the very beginning i was like i don't know how to do it i'm really really worried that i won't give my dog everything it needs yeah um i don't know how to do it and if i don't do it properly then you know um I, i'm not going to be doing right by the dog so i was really really worried about making the jump i liked the idea of it i loved the idea of it but i was really worried and then i came to you with zach yep uh he had i think he was lame on and off and then he was also a bit itchy and yeah. you said, oh, have you ever thought about raw? And I said, yes, I have. But I just, I'm a bit too afraid to take the leap. Yeah, I vaguely remember that conversation. That was yeah. in Bath, wasn't it? In, yeah. In the, in the basement. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. so you did. You made the leap. Yeah. Then. Okay. Fabulous. DIY, obviously, because there was nothing yeah. else in DIY at the time. Exactly right. Uh, Anglian meat products and such like. Yeah. I can't yeah. remember who it started with. But yeah, all DIY to begin with. Okay. And I still Amazing. DIY now. Yeah. Okay. Good. And what are uh, top tips of what what are the biggest mistakes you've made? Give us just two of the biggest mistakes you think you've. This is totally off the cuff. I didn't prepare you for this. 
but I just think I think you'll be able to you'll be able to what it just what what sticks in your mind is going oh god uh, why did I do that or you know um, anything that stick in your mind certainly the puppies at three weeks their first introduction introduction to meat was with bone in it right that absolutely sticks too in much my bone. mind yeah okay. straight off too much bone okay. um learned that one never done it since never had a problem since i've always been yeah. slightly slightly gentler with it since yeah. not a problem at all yeah. uh any other what other mistakes to do with raw um oh it's a hard one. Oh, sorry I'm not, I'm not to on, um bones tell us about bones tell about uh, 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 uh issues or or successes with bones what about feeding multiple dogs with bones how do you do that so they don't it's, get stroppy well some of them can some of them can be more likely that way it depends on the dog's characters to be fair yeah um, so some of them will be uh, i might feed separately it just depends on the individual dogs i've had dogs in the past that have all got on fine and they've all been able to sit around four or five of them eating bones okay. and other times i haven't so it depends dog's character actually totally um, but what i would say is i think if a dog's not fed bone very often and then they have it and it's it's highly valued then you're more likely to get arguments if they have them on a regular basis they, it's not the same um Brilliant. so that makes that makes a huge difference if they Brilliant. have them regularly brilliant so um but i've always fed i used to feed a lot of um uh weight bearing bones and i have to say i've stopped that now just because i know they're so hard yeah and i've had some really really hard chewers um and i'd not i don't like to see them like sometimes with some of the bones where they like really really gnaw them gnaw them down and i think mm. you know they eat they eat loads and loads of bones so I think some of them, if they're a bit more gentle with bone, I think the weight bearing ones might have been better with. Uh -huh. But I've had some that have been so mad on their bones that they, Ava was one of them actually. Okay. Um, but, you know, she was the only one of mine that had a broken tooth, but I actually think she did it on a deer antler. I do not think it was done on a bone. I think yeah. it was done on a deer antler. I think I think broken teeth, premolars are the ones that normally go, but I think it's really quite rare. And I think yeah, it's I agree. All my, all my ones I've had, yeah. I've never had a broken tooth in, until her. Yeah, exactly. You're oh, likely well. to do it on a on a stick or a kong or a whatever. Okay. Yeah, yeah, totally. So you wrote something um, really interesting. That was um, you wanted to to go through what you look for in the owners because you select owners, and yeah. so so and it, because during lockdown and it's the same during the last lockdown and it was the same in the two thousand and eight crisis. That everybody went got puppies. So tell us about this. Is just putting the shoe on the other foot. Who's this, by the way? Um, Polly. Polly. Hello, Polly. 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 All right. They Polly. were born on the twenty third of December, so they've all got Christmas names. Hey. All right. Nice yes. Good. So uh, tell us what you look for. So, so you're you're a breeder. What do you look for in an owner? So all the owners out there. <laughs> This is what you've got to do to to uh, to impress your uh, your 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 breeder. So everybody laughs with me because it is very much a, a light, and they're interrogated absolutely good. and completely. Okay, good, good, interrogated. Good. Yeah, go for it. They, what have do you to, they have to earn earn being allowed to have one of mine. It's not easy, Nick. I love um, it. That's brilliant, Jen. It's not oh, easy. Yes, no. What do you look for? First thing is they have to be prepared to, to go the holistic route. Right. First off. Okay. So one of the things I, I used to do checklists. So I, I would have, I might send out a questionnaire and people, you would have to make, give me the right answers. Now I don't do any of that. Uh, I learned that actually it's more to do with the owner's natural approach in the first place. If the owner is somebody who is um, going to go the extra mile for their dog, um be willing to explore other options yeah uh be willing to question the vet that they go to um and because as we know you know they do a great job um first line vets do a great job but um they all have different opinions you know and i and i think the difficulty can be if you don't know any different you think that every single vet would tell you the same thing well, okay. we know that that's not the case you know you can move to a different vet you know, one of my puppy owners now, I'm not going to embarrass her by saying they changed vets, actually, because they weren't happy with the way that they were dealing with their dog skin problem. Sure. Um, so they went out and found themselves another vet who was slightly more sympathetic to the way that they preferred to deal with it. So, you know, and I think it's but I think it's really, really difficult to say to somebody, uh, I want you to do X, Y, Z. 
they do have to feed raw. They have to agree to feed raw. But it's for me, it has to go further than that. If the owner says, yes, all right, I'll do it, but they're not invested in it or committed to it themselves, then what happens is when they come across a a a problem and a vet set maybe says to them, um, oh no, no, you know, sorry. <laughs> somebody's joining in and somebody and a vet may say to them um no you don't want to do that because you've got children and if you feed raw the the child the child will end up with you know potentially potentially salmonella poisoning if they're not committed in the first place to it then they are easily swayed so yeah. it isn't them saying to me yes i will agree to feed raw they've actually got to go further and i've actually got to have a feeling that they believe in it for the reasons rather than a blank yes i will do it i have yeah. to get the feeling that actually they they feel that it is a better way to go same as vaccine same as yeah. anything because okay. otherwise what will happen is if they blindly agree when they hit the very first hurdle they'll fold yes so to me there's no point in that they yeah. they need to be you know happy to go that route because they actually believe a little bit in it yeah um and therefore that means that I know then the owner is gonna is gonna make good choices for their dog for the rest of their life. So okay. that's one of the things uh, you know, to do with anything to do with the holistic rearing, they've got to have a belief in that in the first place. Okay. Um, or be willing to to learn about it really. And what do you advise on, say, vaccines? Where where do you go with that one? Um, I say for I say I look for a compromise. I understand that people feel very conflicted. Yeah. Uh, because they feel that they're they're opening their puppy up to um potentially dying from parvo yeah it, of course it's a possibility uh i say to them that they need to consider both sides of it because i think very often they potentially only get one side of the story which is what will happen if they don't vaccinate so i encourage them to look into what could happen if they do vaccinate and the side effects of vaccinated mm -hmm. and i say i ask for a compromise so the compromise would be no earlier than 12 weeks but preferably 16 weeks and to try to find a vet that will do a single parvo jab if they really want to do parvo right um, and lots of and again lots of owners if they're not really committed will say oh no my vet said he couldn't get it and i'm like well actually okay they could or you might need to find another vet who is willing yeah. to do it okay it's not that any of these vets are wrong it's just that no. they they are they have their opinion and they're sticking to yep. it and it doesn't quite tally with the opinion of other vets yeah uh, like me or your vet or you know whoever it might be okay what about the worming thing where do you go on the worming side of things the worming thing um i suggest that they use worm count wormcount.co.uk <laughs> and and what i say is i don't have a problem with them with them worming or flea treating if the dog has fleas or if the dog has worms but to me, there is no point in routinely. Why stick a routine um, pesticide at them? So, you know, I'm not against I'm not against conventional treatment, but I feel very strongly that it, I would not want to do it routinely. I would I would go with it if my dog needed antibiotics. You know, I'd go down that route. If they needed worming, I, I would potentially go down and give them conventional wormer. Yeah. But, I've got to have feel that there is a genuine reason for it. Not yeah. rush, not do it routinely, or not rush straight off to something like that. Okay, so you're not just going to just jump on the. I'd okay. say right, uh, um, flea uh, a flea product from 12 weeks of age every month for the rest of their no. lives. No, or, yeah. they wouldn't get a puppy neck if they wanted to do that. Or a, <laughs> Or a wormer every month for the rest um, of their days, you know, no. every month or every three months for the rest no. of their lives. Yeah, I, I I agree with that, Jenny. I have to say, um, I've got five but, generations of of five generations of my shepherds that have been so carefully reared and not had, you know, stuff pushed into them left, right, and centre. And I I feel so responsible for the puppies. You know, I bring them into the world and I feel so responsible that I don't want to send them off to a home where they get pumped full of unnecessary stuff. Yeah. Like, like, with, like with vaccinating. If they want to vaccinate, I understand that. But, you know, teeter test before you make a decision. Don't just, you know, pump them full of it. So, yeah. So too much of a good thing. So just so always try and uh, minimise uh, any pharmaceutical use. Yeah. Talk, talk to your vet or your, your holistic vet. vet. To, to try and minimize things but stay on the safe side of, of, of yeah. everywhere i agree completely yeah. yeah 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 that's 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 great okay and um so what about the neutering 
what kind of conversation do you have with regard to neutering? Uh, I think it's very personal. Sometimes, okay. sometimes uh, I prefer to keep them entire personally, and I recommend to my puppy owners to keep them entire. Okay. Uh, and certainly if the girls, if they want to spay, then I say at least allow them to have two seasons first before you okay. spay, spay before first season. Mm -hmm. And with the male, try and wait till they're at least 18 months if you're going to castrate. Yeah. But I have to say, I think, you know, uh, there are situations where it might be that the the home life is made very difficult if you've got particularly randy male, for example, and you've got a bitch in the household yeah. who is constantly being harassed by that male. Then I I understand that for everybody's well being, that sometimes they have to make make the decision to castrate. And of course, there is super Lauren. I don't know what you think about super Lauren, Nick. Super Lauren, you can get uh, the six month and the twelve month version. Yeah. Basically, it's chemical castration for an extended period. I guess it gives you it gives you a look into how they would be, yeah. or it gives you a, a six month holiday um, in that yeah. you can kind of make a decision, or you know get a bitch in or you're just waiting to new to her or something it gives you options i don't yeah. think i i i i'd say to people don't use pharmaceuticals if you can help it if yeah. you have to just pack the bitch off for, for three weeks while she's in season do that and then bring them back and then happy families all over again but i i would go with the german uh scandinavian model which is don't don't neuter a boy or a girl unless you actually have medical reason to do yeah. so i think yeah. that for me, really, is the future. You get yeah. problems if you neuter. You get problems if you don't neuter. And I would rather they 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 kept with their bits, really. Yeah. You know, unless it's a boy and he keeps on running off and he's going to end up under a bus. In which case, he's but better. They must train him, really. They need to train. Well, yeah, but if if he's trained and he's still and then no, some people are not very good at training. Some people are not very good. Yeah. At <laughs> some people are not very good at boundaries on their property. Yeah, yeah. Blah, 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 you know. So I'd rather I'd rather a, uh, you know. In that scenario, if they're otherwise really good and really caring and what have you, but they just don't get their fences fixed, that right, we've got to do the dog. But I will, I will say to them, you know, this is this is a compromise, and the dog is taking the compromise. Mm. And I suppose I think we should because we're the, yeah, right. we're the intelligent, you know, the hyper intelligent yeah. um, beings in this equation. Amazing. All right, this is good. This is good. Um, uh, can't believe we're over time all right have you got any okay. big i know it's time flies when you're having fun it's amazing <laughs> have you got any any bugbears that you'd like to just air at this stage before we yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Go on, <laughs> no no you're welcome to Woo! <laughs> um you've got no, a lot of fans really. by the way you I, people are just are uh, delighted with with what you're saying so you'll not, if, you go, if you go through them afterwards you'll find there's a lot of people so guys this is jenny gould she's fabulous uh we love her she's got great dogs and she does a really great job and she doesn't pay me to say that <laughs> any bugbears no, um, bug bug no, not really i um I, I suppose that a bugbear for me would be things where people expect dogs to do things by a certain timeline or behave in a way that they particularly want them to behave. So they, they'll buy a puppy, whether it's mine or somebody else's, they'll buy a puppy and they want the puppy to conform to the sort of character that they wanted, uh, rather than looking at the puppy as he or she is. Yeah. Um, some of my, you know, I've had some fabulous homes um, with mine where the, uh, you know, the people have had dogs for years and years and years, and they'd always done things a certain way with their dogs. And then, this puppy is different and they can accept that that puppy is different and they can fle be flexible. Um, and I have a, I suppose if there is a bugbear, it's people who expect their puppy to be like their other dogs um, or to fit into what they want them to be like. They want them to be social with other dogs. They want to take them to the park and play. And they've got a dog that doesn't want to go and play with other dogs. And it's about learning to be flexible and accept who your dog is um and be able to work around that and they you know i've had brilliant brilliant owners who've done exactly that you know um we all have an idea of exactly the dog that we want but ultimately they're not it's not like buying a washing machine and and uh, yeah at the end of the day you have to work with the actual dog that you've got 
Um, right. That's really important. Really, really important that you can. You know, it's like with everything. All my litters. The whole thing that I do with all my litters is I don't do the the set puppy programs that a lot of people will do, because for me, some puppies are ready for something at three weeks, but another puppy in that litter may not be ready for that until a certain handling or whatever to be three and a half weeks. Yeah. So for me to follow a set a set um, recipe for exposing the dog to this at that age and then that at that age it doesn't work it it for me it's not the way to go because I prefer a much more organic approach it's about the individual each litter I've had is different and I've learned from those litters and I've made mistakes with those litters and you know and they've not you know some have been easier than others without a shadow of a doubt and you can't get everything right and it's how you learn but um it is just being able to go with the flow. And I think I've had to learn to flex an awful lot more the longer that I've gone on with the breeding. I've had to learn to go. People will ask me now, when will you do X, Y, or Z? And I'll say, when the puppies are ready. When it's time. Yeah, I think that's called maturity, isn't it? You know, yeah. it, it comes comes with, with age and yeah. comes with... with Nothing yeah. set in stone, really. Yeah, yeah good. Amazing. Amazing. Um, in one of the Dirty Harry movies, Clint Eastwood was said, uh, "If you want a to if you uh, if you want a guarantee, buy a toaster." <laughs> I should remember that one. <laughs> I have said, exactly. "You're not buying a washing machine." Exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's exactly the same I'm thing. An animal with feelings and emotions, and you know, brilliant. And is with it. It's yeah. absolutely amazing. Jenny, I'm, we could talk all night. We do. Yeah, yeah. Often, you know, we spent many an hour, you know, between taking blood from various dogs. Um, it's lovely. Really great to catch up with you. We haven't spoken for probably 12 months. So it's yeah. really great to catch up. Thank you so much for uh, showing us the pups, for sh sharing your wisdom and showing that there are some very straight and um uh very you know just very uh I, i'm struggling for words just just <laughs> very straightforward and and no nonsense yeah and, uh, it's not even honesty it's it's just about this is it this is why we do it and the results are great you've had five generations and you know so and you've known them all nick I know, and it's great, and I'm so, and I've, this, this is the new generation just here. What do you think, Can I turn it around so you can see them properly? Okay, let's do that as a, as a final, and then I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna press the button with a with a final. If I was Scorsese, I would do a helicopter shot away from the pups. I'm hoping you can see properly. Okay, go on then. Oh, hang on. Oh my goodness. Here we go. There they are. Oh. And there's yeah. another load there. There's ten of them, so they are all over the place. Hang on, let's get down here for you. Can you go in and and get uh, up close and personal I don't know if you can see them my puppy owners would be most most upset if I don't get the, they're called the Christmas crackers because they were born a few days before Christmas yeah, they've boy. all chosen to lay on the only black piece of stuff that we've got here they're very very naughty there's one bit of black I've covered everything in light so that you could see <laughs> them and they've all chosen to lay on the dark it's hilarious one bit of dark. yeah Never so work. Never work with, with if they don't or animals. Them. Well, Jen, we think that we think you're brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, you're a you're a breath of fresh air, and we love you for it. Thank you very much. Take care. Go well with those lovely pups. Uh, a very happy New Year to you. Very happy New Year oh, to everybody. Yeah. Very happy New Year to everybody. Next week. I, you know what? I should really prepare this, shouldn't I? <laughs> Wait, we've got Jason Allen, who is who's a he's a he's a he's a born again raw feeder. He's come, just come to raw feed, and he has done the the deepest dive. He's reading like mad. He's he's got uh, working spaniels, and he knows a lot about feeding working dog so he's going to be fascinating Ooh, be an interesting one. Jason Allen. it's going to be a cracker he's a good lad and i really look forward to speaking to him next week but jenny just to say to you and the pups thank you so much it's, thank you for having me breath of fresh air thank you so much for brightening up our week which has otherwise been fairly strenuous so thank you very much take care jenny thank, you. thank you thank you nick thank you bye